Dear friends, dear clients, a warm welcome to this very special event on healing and preserving our oceans. This event is only the first in a series of events that are very close to my heart, which as International Private Bank, we will run across the next two to three years. And they will be centered around the intricate and challenging relationship between environmental protection and economic development. You know, I spent a lot of time in the water uh, as a free diver when I was a kid, as a scuba diver in my adult life. And through that, I've witnessed firsthand the heartbreaking developments of the marine environment. I have swum and dove in incredibly pristine coral reefs, which a few years later were bleached into lack of life and uh, destruction. I'm really pleased to be with you today to share some thoughts about why it's so critically important that the private sector, both businesses and individuals, step up to invest in the blue economy. By investment, I mean both businesses, profit-making ventures, but also in terms of philanthropy. And if you're talking about saving the planet, you're talking about saving the ocean, because the ocean is the largest part of our planet, and its health is absolutely vital to our survival. The global average temperature of our planet is now very likely higher than any time in the entire Holocene, and therefore in the history of Homo sapiens on this planet. Now, where does the heat go from this warming? 93% of the heat trapped by greenhouse gases ends up in the ocean. The huge changes that are happening to the ocean from climate change, that if allowed to continue unabated, would result in dangerous tipping points with really serious consequences on sea level rise, ocean warming, deoxygenation and acidification. But one of the simple priority solutions that was recommended was the creation of large-scale protected areas to help build ocean resilience to these unprecedented threats and to restore marine life, which includes investing into critical coastal habitats like mangroves, seagrass beds and salt marshes. Um, we've heard a little bit today about how these incredible habitats deliver a triple bottom line. They absorb carbon dioxide, they act as natural seawalls and tie breaks, and they are also nurseries to all kinds of marine life. You can divide the blue economy probably into the productive coastline, $8 trillion. Then there's trade transport in the coastal areas, it's $5 billion. Then you have the direct output out of the ocean, which roughly seven, if you, if you look at the numbers. And then carbon absorption uh, is also something which you would account as $4 trillion. So that's $24 trillion. That's the eighth largest economy in the world. What we have to do next? First, we have to raise awareness between governments, citizens, corporates, in order to achieve soon an international uh, agreement about the ocean governance. So we will be sure about the sustainability and the survival of the ocean and the prosperity of the humanity.